What's good, folks? It's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with a new Profit Taker guide. So I recently released the top solo Warframes, and a lot of you seem to enjoy that video. And I definitely knew that there will be some questions asking more about the Profit Taker segment. And quite a few of you wanted a proper full Profit Taker guide, and so here we are. Now, for those who are actually going into Profit Taker, the one thing you want is credits. That's pretty much it, because there's no point doing Profit Taker other than credits. Some might say, oh, but you can farm Torrids. That is a bonus. But people who are farming Profit Taker, they're mostly going there for credits, and credits are actually in a higher demand now ever since they introduced Arcane Dissolution, which is also known as Arcane Gamba, where you gamble away other Arcanes to earn other Arcanes. You get the gist. Now, let's explain how to get started in Profit Taker. To do Profit Taker, you need to be at a certain rank. This is Old Mate in the Solaris United Syndicate, because once you have Old Mate, you get access to more of the Vox Solaris, which is a sister syndicate to the Quills. Now, remember, I did say you need to be at a certain rank to access more of the Vox Solaris. So, that means just level up your syndicate because this, again, is spoiler territory for those who are still leveling up and haven't experienced more of this section yet. So once you go here, of course, you get to interact with this briefing table. And you can't really talk to Little Duck unless you're in your operator or drifter. Spoke to the business lately. How is he? And yes, their, their heads are in their stomachs. And you get access to all of these other things, like your standing... Or you can level up, of course, whatever they're selling. You can trade your toroids for standing, etc., etc., from building your amp and buying capture scenes. When you get to this table, you have access to the Profit Taker and the Exploiter Orb. And of course, we don't care about the Exploiter, we want the Profit Taker. You have to go through all of these bounties to finally get access to the Profit Taker. It's a giant mechanical spider. Now, the mechanics for Profit Taker are pretty simple and straightforward, nothing too difficult. The only thing that makes it difficult for a lot of average players is the amount of enemies shooting at you while you're trying to take down the boss. That's why I'm going to recommend you a frame which is going to be perfect for your adventures in the Profit Taker hunts. And that frame in question is Chroma. Why Chroma? Simple. The main thing is that he has effigy. He's the only Warframe that can affect the Profit Taker credit drops. So with Effigy, you shed your cloak, and this cloak will, of course, do some damage. But the main thing that you want is that credit multiplier. You get a two times credit multiplier, doubling the credits that you get when Profit Taker poops them out. Yes, she literally poops out credits. This two times credit booster stacks with other forms of credit multipliers. The ones that you get from the market, the ones that you get from your relay, and the one that you can get from your Smita Kavant using the Charm mod. All of those stack. And guess what? When there's an event booster, meaning when DE releases a bonus credit weekend or whatever, that also stacks. So all of those combined will yield way more credits. Now, Profit Taker is, of course, way faster than Index, but it requires a lot more effort than Index. So that's why I say if you just want to do a chill credit farm, stick to Index, because Profit Taker is slightly sweaty. Okay, for this demonstration, I'm going to go to the relay. You need to be MR30 and above to access this relay buff station. So I'm going to give myself a credit blessing. This is a 25% increase in your credit gain. So yes, bestow this blessing. You can also do slash profile shop. This is an account that you can access while you're in a mission. You go to wish list and then you can buy any booster, anything that you need on the fly. So right now I'm going to get a three day credit booster just for this demonstration. Minus 40, Pepe hands. So right now I have a credit booster. I have a relay booster. And of course I'm using Chroma's effigy and the Smita Kavant using the Charm mod. This is literally all you friggin' need. So right now, I'm going to use Calculated Redirection because my Warframe doesn't have that many shields, so I can't really link enough shields from him. But because I'm using the Red Chroma, I can use Link Vitality and get even more health. Hope you understand how these mods work. Now, taking a look at the Chroma loadout. The one thing that you may have noticed, I got rid of Vex Armor because it is useless for the Profit Taker fights. And Eclipse is way better, even with the changes to Eclipse. It is a final 
damage multiplier and it's going to be perfect for raw damage builds and not for DOT builds. While Vex Armor just gives you base damage and requires you to take damage to your health, which is quite dangerous in a profit taker fight if you didn't build properly. And then also you have to realize is that Vex Armor requires for you to build it up while Eclipse is just one single click. Now that you know why we're using Chroma and what helmet ability we're using and what affects the profit taker drops, let's go over the profit taker mechanics and why we use certain weapons against the profit taker. To understand these mechanics, let's actually hunt it step by step so I can explain everything that is happening during the fight. This way you can understand while also getting a visual representation of what I'm talking about. Now, if you're doing profit taker, you can of course do it in a squad, but this is a solo setup, which you can do whenever you want. Now, when we exit, you're going to notice there's nothing happening until you get a red marker. That indicates the profit taker has spawned. There you go. So I'm going to do two void slings because I'm using Madurai. This way I can snapshot to the strength to my Eclipse and my Elemental Ward. And this does not deactivate even if I'm on Arcwing. See, it's still active. There it is. The Profit Taker. Notice the Profit Taker is covered in this shield. And it has radiation on its forehead. Meaning it's only going to take damage from radiation. So you have to have your weapons match the damage type that it has on its head. So right now, my primary can deal radiation. So I'm going to shoot my radiation weapon. Now it's switched to fire. And my secondary does have heat on it. Dealing damage, I get rid of the heat. And notice now it has slash. Slash is available on a lot of weapons. But I am not using your traditional weapon to get rid of that slash, but my melee weapon with the Exodia Contagion Arcane. Exodia Contagion deals all three physical damage types. And it also deals blast. Now that I destroyed the shields, notice that it's vulnerable, just similar to the Eidolon. And it can only take damage from arc guns. So, let's summon an Arc Gun. Again, just like the Eidolon, it's weak to radiation, since it's alloy armor. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. Once you get rid of all the four limbs, you shoot the head. We're going to get rid of our gun because we don't need it now. Notice it shoots out these things. These are called pylons. It protects the profit taker. So I have to go there and destroy these pylons one by one. It's going to shoot out pylons twice within this fight. This is the first pylon phase. Since that is pretty high up, we can use our arc wing to fly up and destroy it. Once we destroy those pylons, it's then weak yet again. And since I killed one of the corpus units with an arc gun, I get arc gun ammo, so I can summon the arc gun yet again. But if I can't summon my arc gun, I can always use my necromech. I can mount this necromech and destroy the limbs. There we go. Limbs are destroyed, his body is weak. Now it has corrosive. Since my melee weapon has the melee exposure, I get free corrosive damage, so I don't have to mod for it. It has impact, that's perfect. I can deal with that. My primary weapon has toxin, so I can deal with that. My melee also has electricity, so I can deal with that. My secondary weapon has viral, so I can deal with that. Now that I destroyed the shields, here you go. See this Argun guy? This guy gives you Argun ammo. So we can pick that up. And I can summon my Argun yet again. Destroy all four limbs, and his body is weak. We shoot the body. Okay, it shoots out pylons pretty high, so we have to go to them. Get rid of that one. That one. Oops, that did not die. And finally, the last one. But since this is the final phase, notice now we have a timer on the top left corner. 
We have to get rid of the shields very fast. All right, fire, IPS, and now it's weak. So now that we can mount our Necromech or use our Arc Gun. So let's use our Arc Gun since it's it's off cooldown. Shoot the limbs. There you go. And now it's weak. Finish it off. That's it. You've killed the Profit Taker. And now it's going to do a little animation before it poops out its credits. Watch the butthole. Legit, you have to watch the butthole. And then summon your fourth ability. And it's going to poop out credits. There you go. We picked up 280,000 credits from that fight. And this is going to get affected by our credit boosters when we extract. That's it. That's a profit taker run. Notice from that 280,000 that I picked up gets doubled because of my credit booster. But unfortunately, my speed of Kavant did not trigger. If it did, I would have gotten a million and above. Very simple and very easy. As you can see, I had no issues with surviving because I had Chroma. He's pretty tanky for that type of encounter. And I had enough damage coming from my weapons and my helmet ability multiplying the damage that I'm dealing. You saw how we did the Profit Taker very slowly without using any long and reward weapons, but weapons that you can just farm right away without wasting any time. All right, here we are back in the Orbiter to go over our weapons. One thing here you may have noticed is that I'm not using the Zenith and I'm not using the Kuva Ogres, which is currently the meta for speedrunning. But Kuva weapons, Kuva weapons are going to be a massive boon to your Profit Taker runs because Kuva weapons can come with combined elements. And the two combined elements that you get are Radiation and Magnetic. And because we recently got the combined mod for Radiation with the Whispers of the Wall, we don't really need that in our Kuva weapons. But we have a free one, Magnetic. This way, if we can get a Magnetic Kuva weapon, this frees up two mod slots. Now, my Kuva Karak has bonus Magnetic. This is going to be the primary that I'll be using. And it has a very basic build. Notice that I have the Radiation mod and I have Toxin. Toxin can be quite annoying, especially if it pops up because Toxin is a fundamental mod to combine gas, viral, and corrosive. So having a weapon that just has pure Toxin without any other elements is very huge. Here's another reason why we need combined elements. Because if you have a singular element Kuva weapon and you mod just like this, your singular element will combine with the single modded element. And you don't want that. So this is why we go for combined elements on our Kuva weapons. I have Radiation, Magnetic, and Toxin. We have Dexterity for our main base damage, but I also have Amalgam Serration here. I need this for flight speed. And multi shot, crit chance, crit damage, fire rate, and faction damage. The Profit Taker is a Corpus unit, so it takes bonus damage from the Corpus Faction Damage mod. And finally, Tactical Reload. When we holster this weapon, it passively reloads, which is a huge bonus. And for the secondary weapon, you can either go with the Tenet Detron or the Tenet Diplos, both with bonus magnetic. Both of these have great utility with them. The Diplos have a passive holster reload. Nice bonus right there. Unfortunately, I do not have a magnetic Diplos, but I do have a magnetic Detron. So let's start off with that Detron build real quick. Looking at the build, I have Dexterity, again, for base damage. Our faction damage mod, we have multi shots, crit chance, crit damage, but notice I have viral and heat, but it also has radiation and magnetic because it's innate radiation and it has bonus magnetic from its Kuva bonus and I get a massive heat bonus while also getting free viral here. Very nice to have. And what we're gonna do with the Tenet Dentron is only use its alternate fire. It shoots out so many projectiles that hits the enemies fairly quickly, so you don't have to hold down the trigger for that long. While the Diplos are a very fast firing weapon and have that passive holster reload. And another great thing is that they have a massive crit. And looking at the build, very simple. I have viral and radiation. And since it has bonus heat, well, I don't need to mod for it. But if you did have a magnetic Diplos even better, then you can go viral heat and radiation, dropping off a lethal torrent. For those asking, but didn't you say it has a passive reload? Yes, but it's only 10%. But with Eject Magazine, it greatly increases that holster reload. A Zaw using the Exodia Contagion Arcane. And the Zaw that I'm using is the one that you see in my other videos using Contagion. 
the Bala. It is built from the Bala Strike, Pay a Grip, and the Varjeet 2 Jai Link. This offers it a lot of versatility and utility, giving you some damage and attack speed. And you don't need to worry about status chance because you're just throwing projectiles. Let's take a look at that build real quick. The main thing you want to have on this Bala after building it is Exodia Contagion. Notice I have two arcane slots. It's because modular weapons get access to two arcane slots, which gives it a lot more utility and versatility for profit taker hunts. So yes, Exodic Contagion allows you to throw on a projectile. This projectile can only be thrown out if you're doing an aerial attack, which is jumping, aim gliding, and then performing a melee strike. So this is how to perform an Exodia Contagion strike. You double jump, once you get double jump, aim glide, and then melee. And you throw out a projectile. And the contagion projectile takes shape of your Zaw strike. And right here, it's a Bala strike. And the contagion projectile deals all IPS, your impact, puncture, and slash, while also dealing blast. It also deals viral. And the build is very simple. I have my base damage coming from Prime Pressure Points, Corrosive from Melee Exposure, Gas from Fever Strike and Molten Impact, Attack Speed, Attack Speed to increase the animation speed of me throwing out the projectile. Not the projectile speed, but the animation, where, of course, it's a tactical advantage. And I have Radiation and Electric. Unfortunately, I don't have Crit Damage mods because, well, not enough space. But if you did have a Riven that gives you Crit Damage and Attack Speed, even better. Freeze up a mod slot and, of course, multiplies your damage. Or you can put purple shards to increase the crit damage of your contagion. That also works. And finally, I have my faction damage mod. This is your equipped weapons profit taker loadout. The Chroma build. In the aura, I have holster amp. This is free base damage when I swap weapons. Pretty nice, right? And then preparation to give me that 100% energy when I spawn into a mission. You go out into Orb Valis, boom, full energy, activate your abilities, start fighting the Profit Taker. The main thing that I want to have here is strength and duration. The duration is to upkeep my abilities for as long as possible. I have Narrow Minded here for my main source of duration, which gives me 42 seconds on Elemental Ward and 42 on Eclipse. Pretty nice. But of course, if you didn't worry too much about having a larger energy pool, which will have you use Energy Pass, then you can go with Prime Continuity to improve that duration. Strength at 309% with Umbral Intensify, Umbral Vitality, Transient, and Blind Rage. All of this contributes to Eclipse and Elemental Ward. I'm using the Heat version of Elemental Ward, which gives me bonus health. And I also have Arcane Guardian to increase the armor when I take damage. So some relevant tanking. And finally, Arcane Nullifier, because yes, the Profit Taker also deals some magnetic attacks, which will drain your energy. Can be quite annoying, so I just have this here. Finally, Prime Surefooted, because spending less time in your bunt is a huge DPS increase. If you do not have Prime Surefooted, I would suggest using regular Surefooted, right here and fortitude both of these will pretty much do what prime surefooted does but unfortunately you will lose prime flows bonus energy but then you can compensate that easily with archon shards on your build so up to you whether you want to run blue shards to give you bonus energy or purple shards for some crit damage up to you but of course if you do have prime surefooted i would suggest drop prime flow and use blue shards here to give you energy because you are getting crit damage from your speed of Kavant. How does this work? Well, it's thanks to Tenacious Bond. This will give you final 1.2 critical damage multiplier if your crit chance is over 50%. And here it's at 86%, all thanks to Bite. Otherwise, everything else is just as is. Now we move on to the vehicle segment. The number one thing that you want to have is an Itzel. This is the only Arc Wing you would ever need. All the other Arc Wings are useless. Itzel has the benefit of being, of course, the fastest Arc Wing, as you can see. And it has Cosmic Crush, which sucks up loot. Those are the two main things that you want to have on your Arc Wing. The build, of course, very simple. The main thing you want in a Profit Taker hunt is Hyperion Thrusters, just to have speed. You can do Energy Amplifier to increase the range, which does affect Cosmic Crush's Suck Radius. Otherwise, all of these things are more beneficial for Eidolon hunts. So the less mods that you have on your Arc Wing or your Warframe, so the more energy you start with in a mission. The heavy weapon that I summon is the Imperator Vandal. It is modded for Radiation and Cold, 
which are the main weaknesses to the Prophet Taker's alloy armor. Your base damage, multi shunt, fire rate, crit damage, crit chance, radiation, and cold. And then we have our Necromech. Otherwise, just put whatever. I, I have no idea what I've modded my Void Rig for. Well, that's it. I, I just put mods. Because, yes, Necromex. At the end of the day, you're only going to use Necromex to hold the door in Idol and Hunts or wield an Arc Gun in Profit Taker. Here are the weapons that people recommend. The Corvus, the Velocitus, and the Mausolon. Personally, I did use the Corvus and a... It just doesn't feel right unless you have a Riven. And the downside is that it's a shotgun projectile that does have fall off. So this is why if you want to keep things simple, just use an Imperative Vandal or use the Mouse Lawn. Very nice. Very easy to deal with if you're not speedrunning. And the builds are literally going to be the same. And that is the Profit Taker loadout. Now here's a little tip with Exodia Contagion Tech. So as you're throwing out your Contagion, right? You do have time to do things while you're waiting for that projectile to be thrown out. As you're throwing out your projectile, you can shoot. This increases your damage. So if the Prophet Digger does change an element, you can easily follow up with your primary weapon to chain your elemental damage. You can do this with any weapon your primary or your secondary. But if you do have the Zenith, the Zenith alternate fire allows you to get that juicy punch through so you don't have to fly to the pylons. You can easily just sit back and shoot the pylons from a distance. Otherwise, get yourself Kuva weapons with combined elements. Highly recommend Magnetic. Well, all right, folks, that has been it for me. I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content streams and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace. Bye-bye now.